Okie dokie. Hello everyone, uh, this is Bruce Rawls and we're here at the School for A Course in Miracles. And as always, thanks to Tim and Lynn and Helen and Bill and Ken and Judy and <laughs> the list goes on. Everyone here, everyone not here, uh, and of course, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So thank, thanks for everyone's participation and contributions even if we're not aware of them most of the time. <laughs> so we'll talk a little bit about that today. Um, I thought it would be fun. Today we're going to uh, cover chapter 11, uh, sections two and three, picking up where Tim left off last week. And that's in the text. And it starts on page 197. And I thought it would be um, good to start out with a little meditation. So I'm going to start with um, paragraph seven in section two of chapter 11 as a meditation. So that's uh, actually on print version on page 198, the last paragraph in that section. So if you'd like to sit back, relax, close your eyes and let the <laughs> words carry you. Mm. Yeah, okay. Would you be hostage to the ego or host to God? You will accept only whom you invite. You are free to determine who shall be your guest and how long he shall remain with you. Yet this is not real freedom, for it still depends on how you see it. The Holy Spirit is there, although he cannot help you without your invitation. And the ego is nothing, whether you invite it in or not. Real freedom depends on welcoming reality. And of your guests, only the Holy Spirit is real. Know then who abides with you merely by recognizing what is all what was there already, and do not be satisfied with imaginary comforters, for the comforter of God is in you. So relax for a few moments and I'll bring us back. Okay, come on back. I just wanted to stay there, but <laughs> we we can read something and still still stay in that frame of mind, right? So, any any comments so far? Thoughts? Late breaking news from uh, what's eternal? <laughs> How's that for an oxymoron? <laughs> okay, uh, Jane. I like that 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 sentence. <clears throat> the ego is nothing, whether you invite it in or not. Mm -hmm. I yep. think it's, I have to constantly remember that. Constantly remember. <laughs> yeah. Even I don't invite it. I don't think, but maybe I do, and I sure don't want it. That's for sure. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, it really is the default um, operating system in our mind until we decided decide to for ourselves that it's just not comfortable and since one of the the themes of the lesson today is comfort and discomfort and uh, the, you know the real the real comfort of course comes from what doesn't change and the discomfort comes from identifying what what does right so so susie yeah bruce it's just what you said you know until we decide and that just seems to be like uh, the the repeating uh, thought in my head is that it's always a, just a decision. Mm -hmm. You know, it's simply, and it's that simple. 
I mean, we, we can make it look so big. Like I got a kind of a nasty email the other day and, and immediately it stung the ego. It really stung the ego. And I decided this is a decision. This is what you've been showing me. And so of course, all I have to do is decide and Jesus does all the rest, you know, it's not like I have to like put on the armor of God and go out and fight the battles and all that stuff. No, there's mm -hmm. none of that. It's simply a decision. So when I, when I cordoned off that little area where the, the hurt was, and I told myself, look at it. What is it? You know, don't, don't look at all the extenuating circumstances that, you know, built this whole issue up just just look at that pain that you're feeling and tell jesus i don't want this this isn't even real this is something you just said in chapter 11 that i made up so you got to get me out of this cave or whatever right <laughs> i was and, just thinking cave yeah 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 mm -hmm. i was just reading the other day because a wonderful email Tim and Lynn sent out about the allegory on the cave. Mm -hmm. I'm going, I, I just got to get out of that. Help me. And it was just fantastic the way he did. It's like, okay, this is all that it ever comes down to. Mm -hmm. It's simply a decision, nothing else. And I just, I mean, I, I love this chapter 11 here. Yeah. Thanks. That's what I wanted to add. Thank you, Susie. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's that, that dark place in our mind that, that we made up and we're trying to, trying to keep, we continually keep trying to bring light into this, this abysmal <laughs> cavernous labyrinthine prison. Um, you know, it's just a maze of, of, of inconsistency and uncertainty and the whole sin, guilt, first of I had fun making a little graphic for the background that was essentially, essentially a modified version of Ken's chart. And, um, you know, the, the usual thing with above the lines is truth that doesn't change. And, um, and I, I had to put in the word already there because it's, it's, it's true already. <laughs> it's nothing we have to do. And then uh, I don't know if, if, if you have, if you go to uh, go to speaker view, you might be able to see it a little better, but uh, um, anyway, and then it, um, the the two thought systems basically, and then the blue dot is really it. I mean, that's that's where everything's happening. That that little decision maker uh, that the ego does not want us to find, and it it makes a whole world, which is uh, you know the the prison world where we're always fighting each other and and uh, have you know entertaining murderous thoughts. And so I just I just made a list of some of the thoughts in that thought system on that side of the. The chart, you know, the ego's insanity, and and you know, projection makes perception, and and it's always trying to keep us focused on the prison, uh, but without, without with but we could try to glamorize it. You know, we hire lots of interior decorators for that prison, <laughs> and and those are all of our our special relationships with everyone and everything, but they always you know fail us. With, but that's by design, right? And then the other side, Holy Spirit says, yeah, you know. Do, do whatever you need to do in the world, but just remember there's a classroom, kind of like what you were saying, Susie, it's just like, it's, it's, it's just um, a misunderstanding, a forgivable misunderstanding. And with, from that perspective, um, you know, ev everyone's off the hook. Uh, it, it's an all-inclusive forgiveness that, that, uh, that brings us back to our mind and to see that the innocence that we thought we th threw away. Uh, and then we tried to, uh, you know, grab what we thought was the scraps that were left over from from everyone else in the world by making them guilty. Uh, it's like, no, everyone's got there's enough innocence and perfect oneness to go around <laughs> because nothing ever happened to commit a, an impossible crime, right? So anyway, and then, and then a bunch of words that I certainly didn't have enough room to to put the whole vocabulary there, but I just put a handful of words that came to mind including the the comfort and discomfort theme and then of course the one I, the one I didn't get was the, the guest you know we got two two guests I was thinking of uh, that roomy poem about the the guest uh, which I probably could read but uh, anyway why don't we go ahead and, and read the uh, unless anyone has any other comments or questions at the moment read the the uh, 
first part, which is uh, section two in chapter 11, the invitation to healing. And again, that's on page 197. Anyone like to read the first paragraph? Jim, how about you? The invitation to healing. If sickness is separation, the decision to heal and to be healed is the first step towards recognizing what you truly want. Every attack is a step away from this, and every healing thought brings it closer. The Son of God has both Father and Son because he is both Father and Son. To unite having and being is to unite, is to unite your will with his, for he wills you himself. And you will yourself to him, because in your perfect understanding of him, you know there is there is but one will. Yet when you attack any part of God and his kingdom, your understanding is not perfect. And what you really want is therefore lost to you. Any thoughts on that, Jim? Um, sickness is separation. That, that's the whole thing. You know, just one mm -hmm. decision. Choose again. Choose again. <laughs> yeah. Over Choose and over again. and over. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Till we till it sticks. Uh. Yeah. 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 Till you get the right choice. Yeah. And and that the sickness of separation is always about the mind, right? It's always and only about the the uh, the light blue quadrant in, in that that chart behind me that you know there's the holy spirit's decision making choice that says i can i could see peace instead of the the um, the ego's insanity i could i could see the innocence not only out there by seeing the sh the shared interest uh, but i could also you know bring it back up to the mind see that and into into the internal uh, identification and realize that um, you know, I, I haven't committed the impossible crime, nor has anyone else, right? Yeah. And then having and being is, is obviously a pure non-dual uh, uh, conundrum that it, when we're identified with the ego, we think, if we think we're separate, if we think separation is real, then having and being are very different. But in pure non-duality, it's, it's one thing, but that's not where we're at. So we got to start with where we're at and just realize if I'm making separation real, that I need to look at my specific classroom situation, whatever seems to be a grievance or a upset at the moment, and just say, Holy Spirit, look at this with me, please. <laughs> there's there's always instant instant compliance. <laughs> and and we see this like, okay, the thing that I think I'm upset about really hasn't happened in eternity. And uh and therefore, it's it's forgivable. So, so when we attack any part of God and His kingdom, our understanding is not perfect, and what we really want is therefore lost to us. I was I was also I also looked up the word will in the dictionary, I found a whole slew of definitions, you know, including purpose and intent, and and then it kind of ties into um, the, the the world's definition, which would have to do with uh, wishing and wanting and desiring, which is basically making the separation real, saying that what I what I really want is outside of me. And the Course keeps reminding us that what we really have and are, the having and being, is inside of us already. Already, already, already. <laughs> All right, already. <laughs> and, and so from that perspective, um, you know, we can afford to relax because it's not going anywhere. That what we what we really truly want is we don't need to want it because we have it and are it. Yeah. Tim, you look like you have a comment. Well, uh, just, yeah, <laughs> it was a funny word, and I mean, yeah, for, yeah. sometimes it's a verb, like, like how's he put it? Oh, he wills you himself, and then mm -hmm. sometimes it's a noun, like he's talking about my will and his will are, are together. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't help a whole lot either. <laughs> <laughs> I know it tries to meet us where it's at, but it's, it's got to be a, the, the capital W will has got to be a pure non-dual. It's already done. 
kind of thing, right? You know, it's it's a fait accompli. It's a, it's already accomplished, right? Yeah. Well, I, I was also thinking as you, we were reading this uh, paragraph that everything I've ever wanted, I would say probably ninety-five to almost ninety-nine percent of the time, I got it. I mean, if I really wanted it, I went after it. I got it. I mean, it wasn't always good for me, but I got it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like I willed this to happen, and it damn it, it was going to happen, come hell or high water. I was going to go to California if I was going to do this, if I was going to do that, if I was going to be in a relationship, you know, it just, it just like the, my will made it seem like it made it happen. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, so what does that mean? Like in terms of my real will <laughs> and making what I really want happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't it seem like everything that we will with the lowercase W in the world is really, you know, devolves into desire and, and some some kind of lack or shortcoming or or really guilt, you know, just basically think thinking, well, I've separated myself from the, the state of mind that I really want. I believe I pulled this off, this impossible crime of separation. So now I'm feeling bereft and hopeless and sad and and you know angry and depressed and all, the whole the whole you know catalog of ego emotions, even if we're not consciously aware of it most of the time, and bringing those to awareness and letting the world take each specific thing that seems to be upsetting us as our classroom for looking at that part of the unconscious is is hugely i think important and i think that's why ken wapnick says you know that, that you know we're quoting freud that's you know the unconscious mind you know in dreams um is revealed to us that it's dreams are the royal road of the unconscious and all our time is spent in dreaming so every specific thing that seems to be happening in the world then becomes our classroom each moment every second <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh Danielle, did you have something? No. Nope. Oh, okay. Okay. Anyone else? Are we going to, would you like Daniel, would you like to read the second paragraph? Okay, great. I have Thanks. Oh, Bruce, I sorry, didn't see. Yeah. Uh where are we? I'm I'm sorry. Oh, oh, wait. we're on uh, page one ninety seven in the text, okay. which is chapter Thanks. eleven, section two. And we're on paragraph two now. You betcha. Okay. Paragraph two. Healing, <clears throat> excuse me, healing thus becomes a lesson in understanding. And the more you practice it, the better, and the more you practice it, the better teacher and learner you become. If you have denied truth, what better witnesses to its reality could you have than those who have been healed by it? But be sure to count yourself among them, for in your willingness to join them is your healing accomplished. Every miracle that you accomplish speaks to you of the fatherhood of God. Every healing thought that you accept, either from your brother or in your own mind, teaches you that you are God's son. In every hurtful thought you hold, wherever you perceive it, lies the denial of God's fatherhood and of your sonship. Reflections? Musings? good okay yeah thank you yeah I, I, well another paragraph that just spells it out you know it's, it, it really is moment to moment a choice and we need to be gentle and patient with ourselves when we find ourselves you know intentionally and sometimes we're, we don't even you know we're <laughs> that double shield of oblivion we're we're so mindless that we've we, you know a long stretch of a day can go by and it's like oh i i didn't realize you know that i was basically just on automatic and it's sort of like pulling the, the masking tape off the, the operating system control panel and saying, yep, solidly in ego mode. <laughs> it's I'm doing the what's in it for me dance. <laughs> and and you know, it's it's nothing wrong in truth. There's no there's no crime really, but it's it's the needless suffering of just not allowing ourselves to be guided, you know. And uh the, the benefits, the 
the boost that we get from that uh, that guidance yeah the, the expediting of the piece <laughs> uh let's see um beth would you like to read the third paragraph I really like that last sentence in the second paragraph. I think it just kind of, every once in a while, I read one sentence that explains the whole thing to me. And that one, especially the way Daniela read it, it just really made so much sense to me. Every single time I'm holding a hurtful thought, I'm judging something in the world. Mm -hmm. um, I'm denying my source. I'm pretending I'm a body. And, and and I think to take that even further, I'm only hurting myself. I'm judging myself. I'm judging, I believe I'm judging something out there, which there's nothing out there. I'm just judging myself. Mm -hmm. I'm holding a hurtful thought against myself. So that's the one thing <laughs> I'm doing. But But in the process of doing that, I'm denying my source. So it's kind of like I just dropped myself out in the middle of the desert, no water, nothing. I dropped myself out there. And then probably the whole way back, I'm bitching and moaning that it's somebody else's fault. It's just, to me, it's that, that one sentence is just really kind of described the whole thing to me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's all self-sabotage, isn't it? It yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. It's brutal self-sabotage. And until you recognize that, until you recognize what you're doing to yourself regularly, not yourself, Beth, there is no Beth. I'm denying my truth as the son of God and, and just adding all this bullshit to it and saying, I hate all of it, but yet I'm saying I'm just going to add more and more and more of it unless I choose to, to release it and forgive it. So you know, and, the third, and, oh, that, I was just going to say, and fortunately, Holy Spirit can use all that that ripe, fresh fertilizer to to grow the lilies with. Right? It's it's all a matter of what's used. We yes. can take we can take the bricks from the prison, like in the background of my my chart behind me, and use the same bricks to build the classroom moment to moment. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's that that's forgiveness. It's that simple process. Yeah. You know, it's that simple process that. That is so much simpler than what we've made mm -hmm. and, and we can correct it. You know, we've, we've made such a mess, but we can correct it so quickly with just that forgiveness. So I'm so grateful for that. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to read this book, this act your what is it? Your part. Um, I'm not a philosophy buff, buff. I've had to go to the computer to have them pronounce the words for me because like, what the hell is this word? I've never seen these letters put together, um, but I'm reading this and I'm thinking this guy really is talking about A Course in Miracles. It's it's spoken about over and over and over again, um, but he doesn't talk about forgiveness. So thank God for forgiveness, because that's that's the ticket right there. So, mm -hmm. OK, so uh, number three. And denial is as total as love. You cannot deny part of yourself because the rest will seem to be separate and therefore without meaning. And being without meaning to you, you will not understand it. To deny meaning is to fail to understand. You can heal only yourself for only God's son needs healing. You need it because you do not understand yourself. Boy, that's true. And therefore, no, no, not what you do. Having forgotten your will, you do not know what you really want. All that denial, all that denial. And really, it's just, it's just not wanting to forgive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I don't want to forgive, I'm denying my truth. <laughs> It's so absurd, really, when you think about it, that, you know, we're just this loving being, but we're choosing to be a body that dies and, and, and exists in hell. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a little overwhelmed by my choice today. So thank you. 
Yeah, well, it's it, that's the whole one of the whole strategy aspects of the ego is to to be overwhelmed, so we can feel like, oh, well, it's just too much, you know. And yet, all this really asks of it is just in each moment, it's already available. There's a there's a, a choice that's possible, and I just need to keep reminding myself that. the The other thing that that, that grabbed me about this paragraph was uh, you cannot do- deny part of yourself because the rest will seem to be separate. And and a couple of analogies came to mind is the jigsaw puzzles. When you when you finally get the last piece in it, you know, the whole picture appears. Uh, it's almost like some of those online jigsaw puzzles. So when you put the last piece in, suddenly you know, the next screen appears kind of thing. But you don't see the next screen until you put the last piece in. And then years ago um, in the Northern California foothills, uh, east of Sacramento, I, I built a geodesic dome home. And I remember... Um, in fact, Dave Van Dyke was one of the people helping me put that together. <laughs> and, and we had, had a crew of friends and, and we had a scaffolding and, and, um, and Dave, Dave was actually up there helping with the last triangle. But it was the whole structure was kind of wobbly. It's all these triangles that bolt together. And the, the, the structure is kind of wobbly until you get the last triangle in place. And then once you, you, you actually you know, get somebody on the roof with, with a sledgehammer and you pound that in three, you know, going around the three corners and until the bolts finally go and you put those bolts in, it's like, wow, suddenly it's like rock solid. But before that, it's, it's a little wobbly. <laughs> but that's kind of, I think that's, you know, the ego's thought system. If we leave anyone out, it's kind of wobbly. In fact, it's in, it's like a house of cards, really. I mean, that's to, to extend that, that metaphor. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Did, uh, did they fall off? No, no, he slid. He slid down the rope. <laughs> you, yeah, you have to put a rope in, and then the second of the last triangle, then eye bolts. So you have some way to slide down. <laughs> that is quite an image. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I had a comment about both paragraphs, actually, uh, but the one before. What jumped out in the um, second paragraph, line two, is he's talking about the people who I think got it, the people who I think are healed. What better witnesses? to healing's reality could I have than those who I think have been healed by it. Meaning, and then he says, uh, and then what's important is I need to count myself among them and my willingness to join them. So normally when I'm doing forgiveness work, you know, I go through the bad guys, but you know, I have sometimes have to stop and think I have to include Muji. I have to include Ken. I have to include Jesus. I have to include all those guys I think are actually doing it. Because I'm not different from them either. Mm-hmm. You know, Jesus helped me see Muji the way you do, because I'm I'm seeing him as separate from me. And so, and then and then even in the third paragraph, denial is as total as love. If I leave any of those guys out, like they're not part of me and I'm not part of them, then I'm then denial is total again. Yeah. Good guys, bad guys. I'm still making them separate from me. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's quite a and when I've done that, like I remember doing it once with uh John Butler and Muji, and it was just like it just stepped up everything into a whole new level. <laughs> the whole experience was way bigger than I could have even imagined. Not just the bad guys. I mean, there are always there's tons of bad bad guys, but there's good guys too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, the, the the special love and special hate are all just special differences that we've tried to carve out of unity. What's all never left unity, huh? Let's see, I saw a hand there. Oh, Sally. Oh, shoot, Jane, rather. Sorry. Oh, you're on mute. Yeah, it's the totality. We have to we have to include everyone. We have to see everyone because mm-hmm. we're all one anyway. So if we don't see ourselves as them, then we are leaving, we're leaving ourselves out which is, <laughs> we can't do much if we leave ourselves out, even though we're all one. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I think Tim's point out is really <clears throat> important. And actually everybody is healed. Um, the already thing that Tim talked about last night or yesterday, um, and that's the acceptance of that, that if everybody's healed, then that healing comes to me and then my healing comes to them, mm-hmm. even though there's no me and them. <laughs> but on this level, that's the course speaks to us on that level, which creates healing for us to understand it. If you spoke on the level of, we can't understand the level of oneness when we're in this level. And it's so refreshing to be able to 
put it there where we seem to be. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to read the next paragraph? <clears throat> Could we have a picture of what you have behind you? Is oh, that sure. possible? Sure, sure. It, it's really nice. It's really a nice chart. Oh, thanks. Um, sure. I'll, I'll send it to Tim and he can post it around or whatever. Healing is a sign that you want to make whole. <clears throat> and this willingness opens your ears to the voice of the Holy Spirit, whose message is wholeness. He will enable you to go far beyond the healing you would undertake. For besides your small willingness to make whole, he will lay his own complete will and make yours whole. What can the Son of God not accomplish with the Father of God in him? And yet the invitation must come from you. For you have surely learned that whom you invite as your guest will abide with you. Yes, <laughs> you certainly do learn that who you abide with, as your, I do, as my guest abides with me. Um, <clears throat> but we, we can't accomplish everything with the Son of God in us or the Father of God, Fatherhood of God in us. It's just that willingness, that will, 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 because we already are the will of God. We couldn't be anything but that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and and uh, you know, again, you know, if we if we're willing, what's already done, there's not that much effort. So, so Holy Spirit really does have an easy job. <laughs> it seems like He does all the heavy lifting. Yeah. Um, the other word that kind of uh, I, I find helpful is the, the the guest, and and obviously, you know, with the two thought systems, you know, two sides of the chart behind me, you know, we've got the the unwanted guest that that we we seem to still want, you know, because we. We're still, you know, afraid of love, uh, and you know, dragging our feet for some reason because the, well, that some reason is because we think that the self that we made up is still has some some mileage left in it, some some value, and we keep breathing life into that dead horse, and it's like, well, that's not really going to work. But that that uninvited guest is the, <laughs> that we keep reinviting, and you know, after a few days, you know, of it, trash in the house, you know. It's like you know, can you leave? But, but we forget that with this, our own it's our own self trashing that we're doing here. So, yeah. Let's see, uh, Lisa, would you like to read paragraph five? Well, uh, first I wanted to make a comment about um, the invitation must come from you. Yes. Like, like when I'm inviting the ego, it's like there's this, there's like this dark veil that that settles in, and I don't even realize I'm inviting the ego. I mean, it's just Bingo. like. Bingo. Part of yeah, the yeah. part of the inherent process of choosing the ego is I don't think I did it. Right. But however, when I'm inviting the Holy Spirit, it's a pretty conscious act. Mm -hmm. And then I begin to realize how consciously I was asking the quote unquote ego to be my guide without ever admitting that's what was going on. But I mean, it's got to be a pretty conscious thing to ask the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it helps me wake up and realize I was inviting the ego and yeah. just pretending yeah. it. And, and it also seems like a lot of times, uh, rather than, and this kind of came up in another group uh, the other day, it's like, you know, are we always consciously asking Holy Spirit for help? It seems like sometimes it can take the form of questioning, you know, having a, a lucid moment where we question whether or not we invited ego in. And, and if we can do that and say, wait a minute, how did this get here? And, and ask for, you know, little light to be shed on how that ha came about it's like oh yeah i asked for this and my signature is on every page at the bottom of every page of the screenplay that is the the, the uh, story of the hero of the dream right yeah thanks i think lisa oh did, was she reading yeah i'm i'm due to read i'm on deck <laughs> <laughs> on the holodeck <laughs> all right paragraph five right uh -huh, thanks the Holy Spirit cannot speak to an unwelcoming host because he will not be heard. The eternal guest remains, but his voice grows faint in alien company. Oh, so that's what's happening. <laughs> he hasn't gone anywhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. He needs your protection only because your care is a sign that you want him. Think like him 
ever so slightly and the little spark becomes a blazing light that fills your mind so that he becomes your only guest. Whenever you ask the ego to enter, you lessen his welcome. He will remain, but you have allied yourself, or is it allied yourself? Allied yourself against him. Whatever journey you choose to take, he will go with you, waiting. You can safely trust his patience, for he cannot leave a part of God. Yet you need far more than patience. It's so beautiful because even if we've invited the ego in, he's still there. He's just patiently waiting for us to change our minds, mm -hmm. right? You know, mm -hmm. and all we have to do is think like him just a little bit, just a little bit for that spark to grow in our mind. And he becomes our only guest. I mean, I've had moments of him being my only guest. Moments, little moments it's pretty amazing mm -hmm. the and sparks I forget. Yeah. yeah the spark's always there isn't it i mean it's kind of like the pilot light you know it's just yeah there and <laughs> but we don't we don't go over that thermostat even though we're shivering right? i know <laughs> and it just it's just so amazing when you do allow it to be the only guest when you've invited him for that instant it is just it's not like anything else. You can't mm -hmm, mm -hmm. even describe it. But why? So then it begs the question, why do I then invite the other guest back? You know, it's like, it's just a process, I guess. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it seem like the process of the course is to, to juxtapose and bring together the two thought systems side by side so that we can see the, the zero track record of the ego juxtapose right next to the the perfect track record of the holy spirit and and using the the true logic of the course realize i don't need to be a masochist anymore yeah. and it's really sadomasochist because you know what if i'm broadcasting sin guilt and fear then you know that's that's the gift that i'm withholding um and, yeah you know, it's it's totality because the, we are part of the one mind so mm -hmm. it, you know it just because when i'm in that ego place it, everything just seems kind of awful i mean you putting know, a molly huh <laughs> <laughs> and, but doing this process and bringing them side by side you see it the contrast so much more clearly all the time mm -hmm. i think that ties into what tim was saying is, is that that you know a lot of times you know we, we have to want to see the conference and the, 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 the difference and the contrast and s see how much, you know, we really are making ourselves miserable. And that's one of the things and that this paragraph also reminded me of lesson 182 and then Ken's comment on it that stuck with me is like, you know, the purpose of the course isn't to make us miserable, but to point out how miserable we've made ourselves. And as we see the contrast, that cognitive dissonance, you know, using a fancy two lit two two word phrase <laughs> but just that you know putting those two things together or dragging the ego's uh specifics out of the closet out of the prison into the the neutral territory of the mind and say you know i think i'd rather use those bricks in this classroom over here instead of the the, the prison <laughs> well i but there's part of me too that kind of wants to bring it out again to see if well maybe this time it will work maybe this time i won't be miserable Mm -hmm. and it and it doesn't work ever right right it's like lucy and charlie brown with the foot, long, anyway. football every, every, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 and and it does seem like the ego will always distort and and basically flat out lie about its success you know so, oh that was me no that that peace of mind oh i, I did that you know wrong, <laughs> wrong. <laughs> yeah thank you thanks so, Bruce, would you like to read the next one? Oh, I, that oh. uh, line, too, the eternal guest remains the one uh, uh, Lisa sort of snickered at, but his voice grows faint in Alien Company. I had this image of this, this giant party going on in my head, and all those guys have showed up. Separation, nightmare, sickness, differences, everything you got 
on the on the left side in the wrong mind all those guys are in the party and they're all like drunk and they're loud <laughs> holy spirit sitting in the corner just waiting for me to notice them <laughs> they're, they're the they're the guests that are trashing the place right yeah the, the little g guests yeah, exactly yeah yeah thanks Tim. we just have to invite them <laughs> but we put them in a corner <laughs> Yeah. Let me read six. Please. You will never rest until you know your function and fulfill it. For only in this can your will and your father's be wholly joined. To have him is to be like him, and he has given himself to you. You who have God must be as God for his function. Came yours with his gift. Invite this knowledge back into your mind and let nothing that obscure it enter. Yeah. <laughs> the guest whom God sent you will teach you how to do this. If you but recognize the little spark and are willing, let it grow. Your willingness need not be perfect as he is. If you will merely offer him a little place, he will lighten it so much that you will gladly let it be increased. And by this increase, you will begin to remember creation. Yeah, Jesus is trying to hold us center and uh, keep us on the path of recognizing uh, who we are through the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. giving him that giving him that chance for us not letting go I feel sometimes that uh, the first sentence says it all you will never rest until you know your function and fulfill it and you know at times we even know our function but um That part of us that doesn't want to fill it has to uh, be recognized mm -hmm. and uh, given to the Holy Spirit so we can walk on through his love. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that tenacity and that hold, holding on to Holy Spirit's uh, guidance is that you know the Star Trek tractor beam? You know, it's like it's always there. <laughs> but we can fight against it, but but it's always pulling us inexorably back to that blue dot, away from the prison, and 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 looking at the emptiness and the nothingness of all those those raucous, rowdy guests in the ego part of the mind that that Tim was talking about. Um, I've got a partial list on the chart there behind me, <laughs> and and just saying, wait a minute. That's a pretty, pretty uh, awful bunch of uh, characteristics. And do, do I really want that? You know, just but just noticing, you know, how uncomfortable we feel, and then the the, the true comfort that that the real guest, capital G guest, provides basically just gives us um, what we've always wanted, and and if just you know, just giving that a little bit more airtime every day is like putting in another little few more pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. I was kind of thinking earlier that that puzzle metaphor. So like every time we put in a piece, it's all sort of like we get a little quick, you know, sec, few second view of of the, the box cover where you can see the whole picture. And then, then we go back to looking for the pieces again. And and then when we get the last piece in, I, I think of that sort of like, you know, the, the last judgment or the it, where God takes the final step. It's like we get that thousand piece puzzle put together and then suddenly we realize, oh my gosh, that's a gazillion <laughs> piece it's just that's just one piece in a gazillion piece puzzle kind of thing you know and then we start you know getting that but we get little glimpses that there's there's got to be more to it than this there must be a better way right yeah i i i also like what you just points out the how our decision making mind uh who has god must be as god yeah yeah you know that's a if you're ever looking in your mind uh to uh, understand God, uh, be as him. And he also says, invite this knowledge because 
back into your mind because you know as in understanding God, God can only be known. And that knowledge wants to invite that knowledge that is known into your mind. And, yep. and that too what uh, helps helps uh me bring me back to center. Mm -hmm. And that invitation, that welcoming happens whenever we look at how we don't want to welcome yes anyone or anything into yeah, our identity and say no that's not part of me <laughs> that's right and you know i i fragmented that i projected that i that's and, and just that's, the way i want it <laughs> and that's and that's the part we got to be aware of yeah yeah when we're not when when we're not inviting them you know that indirect method yeah yeah to get by that yeah. exactly thank you bruce uh marissa would you like to read the next one sure would you be hostage to the ego or host to god you will accept only whom you invite you are free to determine who shall be your guest and how long he shall remain with you yet this is not real freedom for it still depends on how you see it. The Holy Spirit is there, although he cannot help you without your invitation. And the ego is nothing, whether you invite it in or not. Real freedom depends on welcoming reality. And of your guests, only the Holy Spirit is real. Know then who abides with you merely by recognizing what is there already. And do not be satisfied with imaginary comforters, for the comforter of God is in you. Yeah, sentence eight really kind of stands out for me. Um, know then who abides with you merely by recognizing what is there already. And um, that's why I think sometimes we don't have to consciously call on, oh, please help me. And yet, yes, we do do that. But sometimes something just takes over because we have called on him <laughs> and said, you know, I, I have the little willingness. <laughs> yep. T today I was uh, in the bathroom and I opened a drawer and it, there was all this disarray in the drawer. <laughs> there were little vials of something here and you know maybe antibiotic cream there and everything was like a big mess and i looked at that and i realized i'm letting this hurt me right now i i'm actually letting it have power over me and it's only i just sat there for a minute and i got i'm letting these little vials have you know power over me because i'm thinking oh gosh what a mess you know what i have to clean this up and and I just sat there for a minute and I, I, uh, I just said, how can a reflection hurt me? It, it's just a reflection of what I'm giving it. And um, I just kind of just looked at it and said, wow, you know, this, I'm giving these little vials power over me. And um, magic potions, huh? That was <laughs> right. That was my lesson for today. Yeah, that's great. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Marissa. Yeah, all, all, it's all those all those magic thoughts really that are the problem, not not the manifestations, right? And and that's why in that chart I put the little up arrow on the 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 lighter side of the chart where it's like you know the Holy Spirit is always trying to get us to start with what what seems to be the problem, whether it's a drawer full of of potions and lotions and commotions, <laughs> and and just say, okay, that's not the real problem. It's really it's the thoughts that seem to have brought that about, and those are just seeming thoughts. Ultimately, I, you know, I, I love how come up and keeps reminding us in so many ways. You know that the world isn't the problem, that the prison that we made, uh, nor is the ego thought system the problem. But if we just keep going back to the mind, you know, lesson five and thirty-four again, it's like it's not a, not upset for the reason I think it's not about the world or anyone or anything in it, and that's not even about the thought system that made up the world. It's really all the way back to the blue dot. <laughs> I got to keep coming back to to the decision maker and Ken's wonderful chart and just say, okay, that's that's the only place that's going to work. 
And if I invite that guest in, then I don't need to worry about the, the guests that appear on or not appear on the level of form. I mean, whether or not I'm physically in a cave or in a, in a multitude of thousands or millions of people, you know, it doesn't matter because the, the, the form really is just a, you know, momentary reflection of previous thoughts. And, and, uh, but it's really, if I can use both, uh, the, the outer and the inner as, as guideposts to get back to the piece with, um, you know, seeing seeing that thoughts I were choosing that weren't uh, peaceful, that becomes my classroom again, right? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, and I sometimes go back to lesson two with lesson five. Mm -hmm. Like I've I've given all of this all the meaning that it has for me. One of my favorite and, lessons. And yeah. then I go, why? Yeah. Okay. The yep. purpose it brings you back to purpose. Everything is purpose, not form. You know, mm -hmm. it kind of. Uh, brings that right home. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And the purpose for everything that we have and all of those crazy thoughts in the ego thought system is always to make separate, to, to make the, the impossible crime seem possible. And uh, that's the sickness. Yeah. Any more thoughts on this section before we go to the next one? Well, in terms of uh, Marissa's um, story, uh, I was... I was thinking that, yeah, there's the mess in the drawer, and yeah, it has seeming power over me, but that's because I'm I'm identifying with a me that it can have power over. You know, like I'm one of the vials in the drawer, in essence. Yeah. I'm identifying as a separate thing that this mess can have power over. Like all these other vials are messing with my poor little vial. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm identified with this vial. <laughs> But was there a pun there of V-I-L-E? <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about the vial inside. Exactly. The home of evil, darkness, sin, and vile stuff. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Which, of course, is all made up. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. That's a, that's a good insight. Yeah. When, how could we be different in truth from, from anyone or anything? whether it's a, a inanimate object in a, a bathroom drawer or a planet or a quirk or a quasar, right? You know, it's, it's all, all the same in the dream. Yeah. I think I'm a vile Tim. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. <laughs> all righty. Anything else on that section before we go on? Okay. Uh, Myra, would you like to read uh, sure. uh, the next page or the next section from Darkness to Light, first paragraph? Yeah. Thank you. This, this, I think of this as the, the Paul Simon uh, paragraph. <laughs> Bridge oh. over troubled waters. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's see if I can find the bridge. Okay. Um, <laughs> when you are weary, remember you have hurt yourself. Your comforter will rest you but you cannot, you do not know, you do not know how, for if you did, you could never have grown weary. Unless you hurt yourself, you could never suffer in any way, for that is not God's will for his son. Pain is not of him, for he knows no attack, and his peace surrounds you silently. God is very quiet, for there is no conflict in him, Conflict is the root of all evil, for being blind, it does not see whom it attacks. Yet it always attacks the Son of God, and the Son of God is you. Yeah, bridge over quiet waters, yeah. yeah. I get it, Bruce, okay. <laughs> I like when he says, um, you don't know how to comfort yourself. You don't know, otherwise you never would have grown weary. And so that's like acknowledging we can't do this alone as little dream figures. Uh, without our inner guidance, um, we would just keep getting lost in our own dream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And unless you hurt yourself, you could never suffer in any way, for that is not God's will for his son. Well, that's something like Tim was just saying. If we just if we identify with the, with the person that can be in pain, then we can suffer. But that's not God's will. And when we identify as who we are, 
we cannot suffer because spirits don't suffer mm -hmm. and pain is not of god not of him and his peace surrounds us of course he's talking to the mind he's not talking to amira sitting here in the world in a zoom meeting he's talking to my mind my mind is surrounded with god's peace and it's silent and it's quiet and it's peaceful and it's calming and it's it's our true nature it's beautiful that's the bridge over the over the waters, yeah. But the conflict, the conflict, back to the ego. Conflict is the ego, is the root of all evil. Ooh. For being blind, and the ego is blind, it does not see whom it attacks. Because, of course, the ego never wants us to realize who or what we really are and look within and to find our truth. But Jesus does reaffirm this for us, but it always attacks the Son of God. And that's us. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So we want to stay on the bridge. <laughs> exactly. And notice when we've gotten off the bridge and and then ask for uh, the help to get back on the bridge in our mind, right? Yeah. What what, what that paragraph reminds me of is uh, I, I was going to take a, a, sh a short uh, side trip into the manual in section 29. Um, there's a uh, the last part of paragraph two and paragraph three, I thought I'd just read quickly because I think that, you know, the, the importance of trusting that guidance, trusting that guest, that comfort is is so vital in the course, a.k.a. Holy Spirit. Uh, so I'm going to jump down to in um, paragraph two on in section 29 of the manual. You don't have to go there. I'll just read it. But if, if you want to know where it is, um, I'm going to go to... Um, uh, Paragraph two, sentence six. The curriculum is highly individualized and all aspects are under the Holy Spirit's particular care and guidance. Ask and he will answer. The responsibility is his and he alone is fit to assume it. To do so is his function. To refer the questions to him is yours. Would you want to be responsible for decisions about which you understand so little? Be glad you have a teacher who cannot make a mistake. His answers are always right. Would you say that of yours? <laughs> kind of ties into that one about, you know, judgment. You know, it's like, what? You think you have qualifications to judge? It's impossible. And then this is the one that's a real clincher here. That's uh, in the last part of it that just really spells it out. There is another advantage and a very important one in referring decisions to the Holy Spirit with increasing frequency. Perhaps you have not thought of this aspect, but its centrality is obvious. To follow the Holy Spirit's guidance is to let yourself be absolved of guilt. It is the essence of the atonement. It is the core of the curriculum. The imagined usurping of functions not your own, sounds like an authority problem, is the basis of fear. The whole world you see reflects the illusion that you have done so, making fear inevitable. To return the function to the one to whom it belongs is thus the escape from fear. And it is this that lets the memory of love return to you. Do not then think that following the Holy Spirit's guidance is necessary merely because of your own inadequacies. <laughs> it is the way out of hell for you. <laughs> I just think that's so helpful and, and humorous too, because it's like, you know, it's like, it's basically say you, you really want to, you know, thrash around in this cavernous hell that you made for yourself. You know, you got help. You got the light, you know, because we're all in darkness on our own, right? Yeah. Anyway, I just thought that was, that kind of fit. I mean, it fits any time, but it seemed like it was appropriate for this section. Getting from darkness to light. Uh, any comments on that before we go to the next paragraph? Okay, let's see. Uh, Kathy, would you like to read paragraph two in, in uh, From Darkness to Light? Sure. Thank you. <clears throat> Can you hear me okay? Uh-huh, just fine. God's son is indeed in need of comfort, for he knows not what he does. Believing his will is not his own. The kingdom is his, and yet he wanders homeless. At home in God, he is lonely, and amid all his brothers, he is friendless. Would God let this be real when he did not will to be alone himself? 
And if your will is his, it cannot be true of you because it is not true of him. This is, this is an interesting paragraph. Mm -hmm. um, it it kind of reminds me, I was um, watching a special on um, Ponca Chi Standing Bear last night. It was a PBS special. And um, he was um, defiant of the U.S. Army by leaving the Indian Reservation in the northeast corner of Oklahoma and Indian Territory to go back to his homeland on the Niobara River um, in Nebraska. And he made a promise to his son who um, on his deathbed asked him to bury him with his ancestors in their homeland. Um, and it ended up going to the, Supreme, the Nebraska State Supreme Court and, and um, he was actually granted because they decided that he was a person. Um, and, but in, in the course of all of that, he was granted his freedom to do that, but then he did not have a home. He couldn't, um, his, his homelands in Nebraska had been given to the Lakota and he couldn't go back to the reservation either. So he was kind of homeless. But one of the things that he says in that, and, and you know, this is such a good, um, a good uh, way to look at um, atonement, that we're all one, in my mind. Mm -hmm. There's this, um, he's known for, when he was in court, um, and he was represented by two of the top um, attorneys in Omaha at the time. And he holds out his hand to the judge. And he says, my hand is a different color than yours. But if you pierce it, I will feel pain. If you pierce your hand, you will feel pain. My blood is red and your blood is red. The same God made us both. And I just love that quote. It's, um, and the whole thing that brings this up is that my, my grandson is doing this, um, a school project on the Ponca Indians. So it's a nice little lesson. So thanks. Yeah, yeah. it's and it, it distills down to sameness, doesn't it? I mean, that's because yeah. we're all the same. And I, as you're sharing that, I was thinking. I think there's a very similar uh, quote in uh, Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice with Shylock. You know, so I, you know, does not a Jew bleed? I think it goes something like that. And uh, you know, but uh, you know, we're we're all, the the form is always different, but the content is always the same. Yeah, you know? and it's the differences that make the the murderous thought system seem to have justification but but if the differences aren't real well hmm, now what <laughs> i was also thinking the irony of in, in what you shared you know he was fighting for a personhood uh you know and and yet it's it's all of our struggle for personhood that really keeps us in bondage you know in, in, on on the level of the what the course is talking about anyway you know that the idea of, of a separate person but if, we, if we're all the same identity the, the same transpersonal person, if you will, <laughs> kind of oxymoron there too. Um, you know, then then it kind of takes care of itself, right? Yeah. That's an interesting story. Thanks, Kathy. Anyone else on that one? The uh the two really horrible feelings that um I think we all experience and yet we don't want to uh acknowledge how terrible it is one and he talks that one is that homelessness the that sense of, I, I don't have a home mm -hmm. and then it, correlating with that is is this is incredible um disassociation from everybody I, I you know we feel so lonely amid all our brothers like even in a crowd we just feel so alone especially in a crowd I mean it's it's almost like but who's maintaining the separation I mean, why well, I I could feel together in a crowd as much as we went to a a, a concert last night and uh, 
it, it really hit me that one of the ways we allow ourselves to not feel so lonely is we we collectively as a species we we like music and we listen i mean you could be on both either side of the political fence and you go to a concert and suddenly you know everybody's enjoying the same thing which you, you would think would be impossible especially as as polarized as we are these days but it happens it still happens like there's ways we allow ourselves not to feel lonely there's ways we allow our, ourselves not to feel disconnected and but the loneliness is horrific I mean, I remember traveling in Europe and I just I didn't know the languages. I didn't know the culture and uh, I was traveling by myself. I mean, it was a terrible feeling and there were people all around me. And every now and then I'd remember to pray and then it was OK. Like like, yeah, there really is a connection. I don't have to like insist on this this disconnection on this loneliness. I mean, loneliness doesn't seem like a choice, but it really is. I mean, we don't have to choose loneliness. And it's terrible. Why would we choose that? Like you were saying, it's really bad. It's bad. Take takes practice, doesn't it, to just notice when we're when we're not at peace and and you know realize that there's there's another way to look at this. Huh? Yeah, Jane's got something. Thank you, Tim. I remember in a course of miracles class, somebody saying, "How could anybody be lonely with eight billion people <laughs> in our dream?" <laughs> And that's true. It's really true. Even though it is a dream, there's still, we can see that the Holy Spirit through all those people and not feel lonely. But we do sometimes. Not always. I think it gets less and less as we um, give our guests, have our guests as the Holy Spirit. Then we realize we are, we're never alone because that's pure love. And love could never be, a, there's no opposite to love. Mm -hmm. thank you yep and and kind of tying into what tim was talking about you know when, when if you're in a big crowd or a concert or something like that and you and you recognize well everyone really wants the same peace the same serenity that that comes from choosing the appointed friend the appointed guest that the course talks about that you know we just forgotten that we have that option all the time yeah and it ties in nicely to next paragraph. Uh, Abe, would you? Oh, 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 oh sorry, sorry. I've got, I've got an extra. Thought. Okay, Marissa. Tim, okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have this background, so you can't see my hand sometimes. Oh, okay. No, I was just going to ask Tim. <laughs> um, wasn't wasn't my looking into the drawer at all the vials this morning a form of loneliness? Because I I chose to be on my own when I said that they are bothering me and I'm separated from them because they're the problem, you know, it's nothing in me. It's, it's this whole mess. So, yeah. They were there to support you. Every single one of them, right? <laughs> Once we turn it around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just this lonely little vial being persecuted by all these other <laughs> messes that are around. Me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny. What, what, uh, well, we can look at sometimes and how it can uh, jar, jar our me uh, memory of who we really are, you know, be it vials, be it crowds. So know? was that, was that a bottle battle going on in the drawer? <laughs> <laughs> it, it literally happened, but it's more of a metaphor for me because I, I can look at life that way, no matter what situation it is, there's something out there that is perturbing me and it's merely a reflection of my own guilt. And that's just the reminder, the opportunity to see it as a, you know, a reflection of that and, and, and look at it with, with our, our teacher, you know, so. Or, or with, a, with apologies to Joni Mitchell, I've looked at crowds from both sides now, right? <laughs> uh, Christina. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. I was, when when you said that, Marissa, I was thinking of um, those find it games, you know, the um, where they have all those items on there or, you know, back in the day, they had that one little figure. Now I can't think of it, the name or you Waldo? find them. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Waldo. <laughs> That's what I thought of when you said that. Oh, it's a game. It's just a game. Yeah. 
that's how I'll look at it from now on. <laughs> Where's Waldo? Where's Holy Spirit in this drawer? <laughs> yes. Well, well, going back to that theme of uh, loneliness, and I'm just one little vial separated from all these other vials. Um, I mean, Simon and Garfunkel so nailed that horrible feeling with hello, darkness, my old friend, mm -hmm. calling it a friend. I mean, that's what the, all this, this whole section is about these dark comforters, mm -hmm. these dark friends that we, we associate with. And uh, how can you not feel lonely in darkness? How can you not f feel disconnected in that, in that experience? Dark companions, dark comforters, imaginary lovers, imaginary comforters. <laughs> I mean, it's all imagination. How can you not? I mean, it's just like you have to keep making this stuff up in order to believe that I'm actually alone. Hello, darkness. My, I got to look at the words again. I've yeah. come to talk with you again <laughs> because a vision started to creep in and now I got to reconnect with the darkness. Isn't that the words? I mean, oh my. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the bridge over the troubled waters, you know, it's like, so, so we do have an appointed friend that, that uh, is the corollary, right? The, the, the undo alternative. Yeah. Bruce. Maybe, maybe we're just identifying to those uh, dark corners of our mind. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Those dark corners of my mind are coming back again. <laughs> we'll have to keep reading the coroner's report and and, uh, and asking Holy Spirit for reinterpreting, right? Christina and then Sally. Well, I'm going to pass. I was trying to think of the words, but um, I don't. I can't remember them offhand, but it was something about that part with the vision. And I, I thought it said, you know, left left me while I was sleeping. And so that makes total sense and fits very nicely with the course. But I don't think that's the correct words. Well, I'm with Tim. We're going to look at this later. <laughs> we'll look it up. Yeah. Sally? Oh, um, the Simon, and I've been listening this morning. It's been wonderful. The Simon and Garfunkel uh rift reminded me of 50 ways to leave your lover and i sent bruce a, re a revision yes. for that 50 ways to leave your ego <laughs> and, and if you go to AA meetings it's, it could be 50 ways to love your liver too right so oh yeah well there you go <laughs> anyway i just had to interject that it's, it's <laughs> thank you so much. yeah i really enjoy those lyrics we'll have to share those yeah. thanks <laughs> Anyone else before we go to the next one? Sally, would you like to read the next paragraph? Okay, which one are we on? I think we're on number three, and and I've I've got some some extra material if we if we have extra time, but I think we're okay. We're, we're, All right. But that's yeah. That's, oh that's my child, fun. right? Mm -hmm. Oh my child, if you knew what God wills for you, your joy would be complete. Explanation point. And what he wills has happened, for it was always true. When the light comes and you have said, God's will is mine, you will see such beauty that you will know it is not of you. Out of your joy, you will create beauty in his name, for your joy could no more be contained than his. The bleak little world will vanish into nothingness. And your heart will be so filled with joy that it will leap into heaven and into the presence of God. I cannot tell you what this will be like, for your heart is not ready. Yet I can tell you and remind you often that what God wills for himself, he wills for you. And what he wills for you is yours. Amen. There can't be anything more beautiful than that um, when we remember what it is we really want you know uh, so someone asked me what do you what do you want and i thought i don't know and i thought oh yeah no i i want the peace of god that's what i want what else do i need <laughs> thanks bruce it's thank beautiful you. to read that thank you yeah there's there's i, I looked up there's five places and probably a lot more if your wording's a little different of if you only knew uh, in the course. And if we have time, we can read those. But, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. But uh, yeah, there, there's the, the course doesn't try to 
it's not like it's not like a course in love. It's a course in removing the barriers to the awareness of the love's presence, as it keeps reminding us. So, but but there's a lot of a lot of hints, and it's sort of like you know you get a little sneak previews, uh, the, the trailer for of coming attractions of <laughs> the appointed friend, the appointed guests, uh, you know, <clears throat> next next feature, uh, which is an eternal feature, right? <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Uh, That's a, quite a line where he says. Uh, your heart's not quite ready yet. Like, <laughs> like you're not quite ready for the already, the big already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have to get a little bit more ready in order to have the big already. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's really good. Yeah. Yep. The capital A already. Yeah. Already, already. Uh, let's see. Did Abe, did you get to read? No, oh, did, oh would, you, would you like to? I it seemed like we were about to have you read, and then, then we okay, yeah, got so much discussion going on. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. For four? Yeah, please. The way is not hard, but it is very different. Yours is the way of pain, of which God knows nothing. Yeah. That way is hard indeed and very lonely. Fear and grief are your guests. And they go with you and abide with you on the way. But the dark journey is not the way of God's son. Walk in light and do not see the dark companions, for they are not fit companions for the son of God, who was created of light and in light. The great light always surrounds you and shines out from you. How can you see the dark companions in, in a light such as this? If you see them, it is only because you're denying the light. Mm -hmm. But deny them instead, for the light is here and the way is clear. You know, I'm still uh, still thinking back to the statement we read a, a couple of paragraphs back about it. Conflict is the root of all evil. Here we and thought I, it was money, huh? Right, yeah. <laughs> and I was thinking, well, uh, what does it mean? really mean by evil here and i think what jesus is telling us here is the is that the evil here is separation mm -hmm. and conflict is what keeps our idea of separation alive mm -hmm. which creates these companions that this paragraph is talking about mm -hmm. you know this uh, uh the dark companions that are not fit for us and yet the the, the conundrum for us is that I, I still think there's a part of my mind that still think that conflict keeps me peaceful and safe. <laughs> you know, whenever I run into something I don't like or someone I disagree with, mm -hmm. that idea just comes straight out of my subconscious and into my consciousness and I follow it like, like there's no tomorrow. So, you know, paragraph three is aspirational in the sense that it's telling us what our experience could be like if we just let the light guide us and only let the light guide us. Mm -hmm. And the challenge for us is to follow what the course tells us to do, which is to let go of the yeah. blocks that block the light that can guide us if we want to. And the challenge behind that is to let go of the idea that that conflict can keep me safe and, and peaceful. Yeah. So that's my work for today and tomorrow and the rest of my lifetime, I think. You might have some company. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, I was thinking I was thinking of the obstacles to peace that in chapter 19 that Ken wrote a whole book on, you know, the journey home. And and you know, the first one's being, you know, the desire to get rid of the peace. You know, it's like, well, yeah, I gotta gotta know that's probably if we can just notice that more and more frequently, it's like, oh, I'm actually trying to sabotage the peace whenever I want to have those those rowdy guests in my mind and the dark companions, you know, and it, it, what, it, it, it keep asking, you know, is this a private fight or can anyone join? You know, it's like, yeah, I, I want the conflict when I'm in that frame of mind. Yeah. Then, then it's like, why? Why do I want this again? <laughs> yeah. Marissa? Yeah, I was just thinking about what Abe was saying and it's kind of like um, conflict uh, makes it real. And thus we have to react to it. Once we've made it real, it's, it's, it's like there to be reacted to or supposed seemingly there. So, um, that's interesting. 
dynamic that keeps that ego ball rolling, you know, that um, it's like the vicious circle. The I mean, reaction. Oh, go ahead. No, Is no, that, go ahead. I was going to say the, re the reaction police will come after us if we don't, you know, to have the knee jerk response to the conflict, right? <laughs> They're part of that rowdy uh, unwanted guest uh, crew, not Jane. That is so perfect what Marissa said, is that conflict makes it real. Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. it's real, we if we think it's real, we will truly believe in it. Mm -hmm. And and what what happens then? We know separation, but for me, it's fear. Mm -hmm. If I think it's real, then I become really fearful. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Marissa, for saying that. <laughs> you know, th thank you, Jane and Marissa. As you were saying that, I was thinking, you know, it doesn't it seem like if we can just catch ourselves just at the onset of the, the that reaction and just say stop look judge not you know if i kind of like the freeze frame on a, on a sports replay and it's just kind of like oh there's where ego fumbled the piece <laughs> you know and just just notice like well that's what's going on i i and before i you know set the the defense and the offense back into play i just have to say why do I want to get involved in this fracas? You know, why do I want to keep attacking this thing? But, uh, you know, it takes a lot of practice, I think, to just catch ourselves right when we, you know, are, and we've wired the whole the whole world with buttons, eight, eight billion plus buttons that, you know, seem to push our buttons. But, you know, we're the electrician that wired the, the damn thing. <laughs> I think Ken used to say, if you can yeah. just catch yourself the moment you drop his hand. Yes. yes. You get closer and closer, you know, at, yep. at, you do that exactly so we need a of, it's a hell of a fumble <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really really and Hel helen used to say i'm not a bread I, I think i thought i was a bread box yeah. that kind of came up to me about the vial thing you know that uh, <laughs> since tim thinks i'm a vial <laughs> anyway yeah i mean that's so helpful to look back on her journey too to see how she was just like us you know uh, on, struggling on with the split mind. Oh, sorry. <laughs> on, on Saturday mornings, I've been reading uh, Absence from Felicity with Lynn Johnson on ACM Gather, if anybody wants to join in. We're, we're about a, a third of the way through, but it's amazing. The first the first time reading, it was like, wow, what a great story about, about Helen's life, you know? Now it's like, oh, what a great story about my resistance and everyone's resistance, you know? And it's like in every page, you know, there's Ken's brilliance shines through and yeah, I thought oh yeah it's just going to be a biography but it's like wow no I'm getting a lot more out of it than I thought I would with reading it again yeah the yeah. second uh the second part of what Abe was talking about conflict is the root of all evil for being blind conflict doesn't doesn't even want to see what it attacks it just has to attack everything yeah. it has to attack all the vials in the drawer mm -hmm. not see that the vial is just a poor little vial just like I think I'm a little vial but I mean you you can't see what you're attacking it, you can't give it what you're attacking any real meaning because then you you can't attack it then it can't be an enemy mm -hmm. so it's just it is it, it, and it, you know it's just this whole conflict thing is blind because it doesn't want to see what it's attacking it just needs to thrash i'll leave that word thrash we just thrash about <laughs> conflict is safe as long as i thrash i'll be all right <laughs> Uh, the, the, there's a bird that's very common around here called a thrasher. And every, I think of that every time I hear it singing, because we got this little app called Merlin that identifies the bird calls. But uh, yeah, and then I was thinking about that, you know, we, we make differences real about, you know, not only among people and then all the different categories that we put people, including on the screen and in, in every other gazillions of ways, but also there's the the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom and the mineral kingdom. And then there's, you know, the vials and the not so vials and, the <laughs> and it goes on and on you know, carving it out of unity and making differences real. Yeah. Um, I saw a hand there. Where did it go? Oh, Abe, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about what Tim just said about uh, conflict attacking everything. And uh, yeah, I totally agree. And not only that, uh, conflict is like a circular firing squad. <laughs> Not only is it attacking everything, but the bullets are you know, hitting every everybody in the circle. <laughs> so, <laughs> not a good idea. Yeah. Oh, that what a visual! I, I sort of the antithesis of everyone holding hands, you know, in a circle. I, I actually found a couple of graphics that, I, if you can see in the the lower 
um, right hand side of my I found some little cartoony you know characters of it is kind of like the, the the peaceful recognition that we're all the same you know and and the and the classroom part of the graphic and then in the, the the prison you know, I just found you know little stick figures attacking each other you know as well you're you're this color and I'm that color well you're this that you're this characteristic and I'm that characteristic he's like as long as there's a difference you know the drama goes on and it doesn't matter what category or what what classification or or what nomenclature you want to throw at it it's like it's as long as differences are real i'm blinded by form nothing so blinding as perception of form and projection and perception of form jane i think conflict is really a, a synonym for blame okay. as long as we yeah. blame we're going to be in conflict and and blaming somebody else for our unhappiness or our Yep. You know, the past for unhappiness is it's it's gonna turn right into conflict, but it's gonna be multi conflictual because it does it's not just blame about one thing, it'll just turn into a disastrous story mm -hmm. once we give the the ego that that rope. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. And just watching how much of the day we spend firing up that blame thrower, you know, we've got that that thing is dripping fire twenty four seven almost a lot of the time. <laughs> well, I was yeah. thinking about too when I start whining about something, like I'm pretty focused initially on what the first thing, but then it like it opens Pandora's box. And then without even a breath, I go to the next thing that I want to whine about. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing I I, I mean it's just this litany of whining. It's like it goes on and it can go on for hours, days, lifetimes. <laughs> and as Jesus says, behind them are thousands more and tens of thousands behind them, right? But, so it's all a matter of what we're using it for. Is it for, for perpetuating the, the blame and the differences or for it could, that could be my forgiveness lineup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Thank you. Yes. Uh, First, I just well, wanted to quickly add to what Jane said that's so important about conflict is it. It, in the course that we start to generalize and all the effects of the choice for separation become the same conflict, anger, blah, blah, blah. You know, it, it's all the same stuff. They're all synonyms now, mm -hmm. which kind of makes it a little bit more easy to uh, swallow the, all the concepts and yep. make it all one, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's really helpful because, because, you know, the equivalent words and the equivalent the equivalency of everything in the ego thought system and the equivalency of everything, you know, on the other side of the chart here, uh, of on the Holy Spirit's thought system, you know, they're all, you know, part of the same package deal. And we're choosing from one whole package to another whole package every time we switch thought systems, right? So, uh, Bruce, and then we can uh, maybe wrap up, maybe you can read the last few paragraphs. Uh, yeah, just to uh, back up what uh, Marissa said, he also goes to the authority problem as being the root of all evil. So, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's the cinnamon, 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 synonym again. Oh, AB had something? No. Okay. Um, well, I'll just I'll just read the last last uh, few paragraphs. I think we can do it really quickly here, and just just because I think it really finishes off this this whole section nicely. God hides nothing from His Son, even though His Son would hide Himself. Yet the Son of God cannot hide his glory, for God wills him to be glorious and gave him the light that shines in him. You will never lose your way, for God leads you. When you wander, you but undertake a journey that is not real. The dark companions, the dark way, are all illusions. Turn toward the light, for the little spark in you is part of a light so great that it can sweep you out of all darkness forever. Your father is your creator, and you are like him. The children of light cannot abide in darkness, for darkness is not in them. Be not deceived by the dark comforters, and never let them enter the mind of God's Son, for they have no place in his temple. When you attempt to deny him, remember that there are no other gods to place before him, and accept his will for you in peace, for you cannot accept it otherwise. Only God's comforter can comfort you. In the quiet of his temple, he waits to give you the peace that is yours. Give his peace, 
that you may enter the temple and find it waiting for you. But be holy in the presence of God, or you will not know that you are there. For what is unlike God cannot enter his mind, because it was not his thought, and therefore does not belong to him. And your mind must be as pure as his, if you would know what belongs to you. Guard carefully his temple, for he himself dwells there and abides in peace. You cannot enter God's presence without, excuse me, with <laughs> the dark companions beside you, but you can also not enter alone. All your brothers must enter with you, for until you've accepted them, you cannot enter. For you cannot understand wholeness unless you are whole. And no part of the Son can be excluded if he would know the wholeness of his Father. In your mind, you can accept the whole sonship and bless it with the light your Father gave it. Then you will be worthy to dwell in the temple with him because it is your will not to be alone. God blessed his son forever. If you will bless him in time, you will be in eternity. Time cannot separate you from God if you use it on behalf of the eternal. So how about if I just read those last two sentences again and we can meditate on that for just a moment. If you will bless him in time, you will be in eternity. Time cannot separate you from God if you use it on behalf of the eternal. Thank you all. We've got our our uh, fun cut out for us. This is uh, that was beautiful. I just took Trump to the temple. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Bruce. Thank, Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Thank you, Bruce. Bruce. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Everyone. Thank you, everybody. Hey, guys. Valley, take me too. Oh, you're all coming. <laughs> I, that's 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 understood. But there's someone I want to leave out. It's a package deal. <laughs> you gotta take him in. Grab his hand. Pull him in. Come on. Got, got to put all pieces in the jigsaw puzzle to get to the next. Yeah. It, make a puzzle. All those separated sons get to come along. <laughs> you need the hard drawer, of, a whole drawer of vials. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great. They all can come, right, Christina? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, yes. Come here. <laughs> Y'all keep no. coming back now. Y'all keep coming back. <laughs> keep coming back. <laughs> Y'all come back now. Here. <laughs> Thanks, Bruce. That was good. Really. Thank you all. Thank you. That was really fun and good. Okay. Hard to leave you guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. <laughs> okay.